Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. My name is Alex, I'm an architect in London and on this channel we'll look into different design and drawing workflows to help with our architectural design process. And in this video I'm very excited to share a little trick that I've been using when I was in the university that helped me with generation of ideas and visualizing my proposals. And it uses a geometric primitives based drawing technique. And in this video I wanted to share how and why I use this geometric drawing technique. So before we dive into the exercise, let's review a couple of key ideas that underpins it. So the first one is the notion of the creative framework and this thing basically exists in every creative field where ideas are fragile and it's difficult to say which idea is gonna stick and which ideas are rubbish. The thing is though that most ideas are quite crap so the objective especially in the beginning of any creative endeavor is to come up with as many ideas as possible to then be able to swift through them, scrap the bad ones and retain the ones that have potential. So the objective here is really to do this as quickly as possible. So this leads me to the second key idea which is the architectural medium and the architectural medium is the 3D medium you know because all of our buildings are physical, they're built in a physical reality, they surround us and we live in them and the way we usually start designing buildings is counterintuitive to the reality of building. So we start with a piece of paper which is the 2D medium and then we try to work our way up and create spaces so there is inherently a lot of perception of depth, materiality and scale that is lost through that process. So the way around that is to use 3D modeling on a computer or physical 3D modeling. And when you do a 3D modeling of something, there is that kind of friction point between your idea being in your head and getting it out there. So unless you're a complete like Jedi of 3D modeling, in which case you shouldn't be watching this video, then there is no way you'll be able to quickly record your ideas. So the the solution for that problem is really to embrace the 2D medium even though it loses some of that perception of scale, depth and materiality. The advantage of the of putting ideas on the paper is kind of twofold. One is that it saves time and then once you get all those ideas on a piece of paper it allows for kind of review of which ideas are good and which you have to discard straight away without actually going into your computer and spending all that time modeling those ideas that you know are not gonna work. Okay, so now that we covered the philosophy behind the need of the 2D drawings, let's have a look at how we can actually do this in practice. So the first thing is to embrace the cube. Now the beauty with the cube is that it can be used to express all other geometric primitives in drawing. So, you know, cylinders, spheres and pyramids can be expressed through cube. The cube is also a good friend of cuboid, which is kind of rectangular shape uh, in 3D. And you can use that to construct pretty much anything you can imagine, starting from the shopping mall all the way down to the toaster. You can draw and design on a piece of paper having a cuboid as a starting point. Now the real beauty with this approach and where it becomes really interesting is when you start subdividing the cuboid into smaller parts to create an object. So for example if we take a sofa we can start by defining the back, the bottom, the floor offset, two armrests on either side and the middle bit. We can use these guides to then draw a sofa more convincingly by adding chamfer first rounded edges, outlines and finalizing the whole drawing with adding some shadows for depth. Equally we can use the cuboid to figure out the position of the object within the existing composition. So for example if we take an existing building situation and we say we want to have an addition to it, we can use the guidelines from the existing building to figure out the proportion, massing and scale of the building by starting to outline it in relation to the underlay. So the trick is really in how successful we are in subdividing the cuboid and how well we can construct the object so it appears convincingly. So for that let's dive into the exercise. And for this exercise I like to come up with some sort of imaginary shapes that I can then try to construct on a paper. So to illustrate the point I'll draw a cube first. So this cube is going to form the basis for our drawing. If I go to the second layer, turn off the opacity, I'll start with my first shape which will be a kind of loop that loops around itself within the cube. So first thing I'm going to subdivide this cube into two parts and then trace it all around. And the same for these additional two sections on either side of the first one. Okay, so now that our cube is subdivided into four chunks, we'll find the middle point of the top plane, which is here, and then start drawing our strip, which will begin on this side here, and then on this side over here. So because this is a continuous loop, it'll start on this side and on this side, but it's gonna be right in the middle at around this point here at the top. 
So here, I'll just trace the middle point over here and then over here, this is where it starts the bend and over in this corner here, where the loop kind of ends its bend. And if I connect this curve with this, do the same from this side, draw a straight line across over here and then try to do the same on the other side by connecting the curve with the bottom flat piece. You can see how this has now turned into a curved kind of ribbon that laps on itself. And it's up to you if you want to add some shadows to it just to define it a little bit better. Okay, the second example is going to be a bunch of cubes that are going to be stacked on top of one another. So I'll define the top portion first. Let's just make them bigger than the actual cube that we have. One at the top, one at the bottom kind of goes outside my frame, but that's okay. And then what we can do, we can kind of project this one closer to the edge of the picture. So extrude that bit out and kind of shorten it by the same width on the other side. And then I want to subdivide this into three sort of equal bits. I'm just going to eyeball that and then have two parts on the bottom, just holding this whole structure together. And again, we can add some shadow for some definition. Another example can be like a stacked boxes in say three layers. And then perhaps to make it a bit more interesting, we'll divide the bottom bits into three as well. So that the whole cube is kind of subdivided almost like a Rubik's cube. And then start defining the base a bit more. So the first layer will have this kind of build up and kind of diminishing upper middle layer with just maybe three cubes and then finally at the very top we'll just have one single cube we can choose to kind of add shadows just to define the whole thing again a little bit better I'm not trying to be super fancy here it's just all kind of for illustrative purposes and the last example can be the same principle dividing the cube this time in four parts like so and then simply kind of zigzagging the pattern around and perhaps infilling these edges here so you can see here like I've practiced enough at this point to not rely too much on kind of additional construction lines so you can see here how although a little bit crude this method is quite powerful in that it allows us to quickly visualize what we want to achieve and then the next step would be to actually put this on the computer and 3d model it accurately I like this exercise because it first of all allows us to um, expand our 3D geometry vocabulary because we can come up with different types of shapes that can give us ideas about different elements within our building and two this also helps us to become better illustrators and to show our proposals in much better light. So this type of exercise can be extremely powerful in sort of unleashing your creative energy by staying focused on the single task which is coming up with as many ideas as possible and doing it quickly and efficiently without relying on 3D modeling either physically or in the computer especially in the beginning when we're trying to get as many good ideas as possible the quantity is really essential so if you want to see more examples of how to do this uh, practically I made this other video on how to use geometric exercises to come up with more ideas that talks about splitting the cubes into different shapes so if you go to that video and check it out you'll see how I use this approach to basically develop my thesis project for my final year in the university. So check that video out and I'll see you on the other side.